In this session we're going to talk about unity with the Father, unity with God, unity with Jesus, unity with the Holy Spirit. If we want to have unity with our Heavenly Father, it's good to think about these three questions. It will help us in that unity. First question is, has God got my heart? The second question, has God got my mind? And the third question, am I living out his purpose? Let's look at the first one, heart. I wonder if I asked you, what do you think is the most important thing about you? You might say, well, it's my family, it's my upbringing, it's the place I live, it's my job. But actually, the most important thing about you is what comes into your mind when I, you hear the word God, Jesus. That is the most important thing about you. What goes on inside when you hear the name of Jesus? You know, do you have a biblical view of God or is it actually your view of God? He's actually based on your upbringing, the traditions that you were brought up in. You know, I was brought up in a very loving family but my family were very legalistic. We must have gone to church at least five times a week, if not more. And if we didn't go to church, it was seen as if we were unspiritual. And there was that pressure of turning up was what really made you a good Christian. And then there were so many rules, the things that you could do, the things that you couldn't do. And I had began to get a view of God, someone who was a bit of a killjoy. He wasn't interested in me having a good life. It was all about the rules that I needed to obey, the things that I couldn't do as a Christian. And that really coloured my view of God. I perhaps was even a little bit scared of him because I thought, well, if I step out of line, I don't know that he'll love me as much. And that is not what the Bible teaches. And over, obviously, the rest of my life, I've had to battle against some of those thoughts and some of those feelings. And I've had to immerse myself in what the Bible says about God, who God really is. And because if you're going to want unity with this Heavenly Father, you want to know that he absolutely unconditionally loves you. For some of you watching this, you, you may have had an absent father or a cruel father or even an abusive father. And you know what? That will very much colour the view that you have of God. And so you probably too will go, I need to really immerse myself in who God really is, who my Heavenly Father really is, because he's nothing like your earthly father. And it's absolutely critical that we have a true biblical view of God if we're going to want unity with him. And so I would encourage you to get your heart right, Allow God's love to overwhelm you. Number two, your mind. You know, we've just talked about God's love and we've talked about unity with the Father and really understanding who he is. But now we have to believe what he says about us. Sometimes that's more of a challenge because we're very critical of ourselves. We look at our faults and our failings, the times we've let him down, and we can become very negative about ourselves. 
we, we don't celebrate the good things that we do. We're just knocking ourselves down for the things that we don't do. And what we do have to do in our mind is we have to align our thoughts with God's thoughts. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 is one of my all-time favourite verses. And it talks about God having a purpose for our lives, a hope and a future. Do you believe that in your mind today? Or is it just a lovely scripture that you put up on your fridge? We have to believe what God says about us and the future that he has for us. Because if we don't, we're not going to have a unity with our Heavenly Father. Isaiah 62 and verse 3 says, You are so beautiful and prosperous as to be thought of as a crown of glory and honour in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of God. I often have that picture of a beautiful diamond in God's hand. He doesn't see any fault and that's us. He looks at us with joy. The Bible says that he sings over us. Why? Because he loves us. He's committed to us. And he's got unconditional love for us. We have to accept that in our mind. Romans 12 verse 2 talks about us transforming our mind. So if today you say, well, actually, I don't really believe that right now. We have to read the scripture. We have to say it out loud. We have to confess what God says about us in order for us to have that true unity with our Heavenly Father. And thirdly, purpose. The question we ask is, what, God, what does God want me to do? We, it says of Jesus that he only did what he had the Father ask him to do. There were many people that Jesus didn't heal because yeah, there was, there was so, so many people pushing around Jesus, but he listened to his Father, he was obedient. What is God's purpose for you? You know, I've, I know people that are saying, I'm just waiting for God to give me his purpose. And they sit, they wait, they do nothing. Actually, God's purpose is very clear. Serve your family well. Be the best employee you can be. And love those that you come into contact with. Share God's love with them. Love, joy, peace. They are the characteristics of the kingdom. So if you are saying, God, what's my purpose? Start loving people. Start serving those around you. And it may be out of that serving, God will open up more opportunities. Who knows? But today, just be someone who's committed to serving your family well, being the best employee, and loving those that you come into contact with. And I pray today that as you've listened to this, your heart, your mind, your purpose, they will be unified and you will have true unity with your Heavenly Father.